Hey, this is Margaret Glaspie, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia, and I'm so excited to be sitting here with one of my favorite songwriters. It's Margaret Glaspie. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Really good. I want to say welcome to Toronto. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. You're originally supposed to play a different venue, but you have upgraded over to the Longboat Hall, so <laughs> how's it feel to be here? Because these, us Torontonians, like, really wanted you. Oh my gosh, yeah, it feels great. Uh, we always love being in Toronto, and I feel like we haven't played in Toronto enough, so um, yeah, it's a nice welcome, and... I spent a bunch of time here and I just, I love Toronto and this area and yeah, it's a good thing. And the last time we actually had you on the website, you were telling us a little bit about how there are a lot of Spinal Tap moments when you're on tour. <laughs> Have there been any so far? There's always Spinal Tap moments, yeah. yeah. I The other day I realized that my amp was turned up to 12, uh, which which surpassed Spinal Not Taps 11. <laughs> Spinal Taps 11. Um, yeah. It was on accident that I was turned up to 12, so we all had a giggle about that, but yeah. Spinal taps everywhere. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. You find those moments just happen like yeah, all the time. Yeah, definitely. It's, just a, it's not just a cliche. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> then when I was talking to you before the camera started rolling downstairs, you were mentioning how you've been listening to a lot of Disney lately. <laughs> yes, I, I'm a huge... Uh, I mean, I think that sometimes Disney movies can send mixed messages, which is unfortunate to little kids, but I do love the the Disney soundtracks so much. <laughs> um, kind of unironically, I think that they're, uh, you know, this is some of my favorite songs. And I've always, always been a really big uh, lover of old musical theater. So, um, yeah, I've always kind of known that, you know, that kind of canon of music and... Uh, I was a, kind of a musical theater nerd when I was really young and obsessed with, you know, Funny Girl, Guys and Dolls, Hello Dolly, all these kind of old musicals that I think are still just genius. Can you mentioned how some of your favorite songs are Disney songs. So what are some of those tracks or the movies that the tracks come from? Well, lately I've been vis revisiting Hercules, which to okay. me, like, uh, yeah, it's just they don't, it's funny to say this because I'm I'm not that old. I mean, I'm still in my <laughs> 20s, but... Uh, it's funny to think of Hercules being like, um, like they don't make them like that anymore. I found myself <laughs> saying that, like, saying that. Uh, so I think I'm transitioning into being an old person. But um, yeah, that movie is just like the the muses that like the background singers are incredible, and uh, the, I think the songs are just amazing. So okay. yeah, that's been one of my favorites lately. Well, on the music front, I do have to say congrats as you have a brand new EPO. So oh, congratulations yeah. Congratulations on Born Yesterday. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. You yeah. mentioned that how this is kind of like a bookend to the first chapter of Margaret Lasby, especially with emotions and math. So mm -hmm. what is this whole thing that you are going to be renewing and the new journey that you want to go on? Um, well, I was on tour for a long time for my last record, Emotions and Math, and it was, um, was kind of like two years straight of being on the road. And there isn't very much time uh, to do much else other than just kind of be on the road, be, be in transit somewhere or, you know, be doing interviews or press or something like that to promote what you're, you know, selling at the time. So um, really, like, over that period of time, I did, I did some other things, not really. Uh, for the most part, like, those were the three pieces of music that I created over a two-year period, which was not very much for me comparatively to when I was not traveling as a musician. Mm -hmm. um, so it was uh, just kind of dr drastically different in being so performance heavy and so light on the writing side. Um, but since those were the three songs that I wrote on tour, it felt fitting to just kind of give them their own space and make a record out of that and then start fresh for a new record uh, to come. And with a lot of the songs being written on the road, like I listen to a song like I Love You Goodnight, and it's about long distance and missing people. Like, yeah. So is that still something that you're kind of getting acquainted with, with how much long you have been on the road? It's kind of difficult. I think, it's, I think it like never really ends in terms of kind of pining for your friends, family, loved ones. Um, but you do kind of, you kind of get in a groove with it. Uh, because everything, if you really choose it as your profession and, what you love to do, um, everything else kind of starts to snap into focus to serve that. So if, you know, if certain things don't serve it, they just don't really last. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but the things that do last, you, you really dedicate your time to because there's such li limited time. Um, so yeah, it puts things into perspective kind of on a daily basis and it keeps you kind of on your toes and I feel lucky to play music for a living for sure, but it certainly has its 
weird things that come with it. <laughs> yeah. I was super happy to see that that, not just that song, but it's very blunt. Your lyrics are always super confessional. Mm-hmm. So would you say that you've always been a fairly blunt and honest person, or does that just come through in the music? I, I don't really know. I mean, it's, it's weird to find perspective on that sometimes because I think I've just... I just kind of do me. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else is out there. Um, but I, I, I'd say that I've gotten, you know, feedback that I, I, I think I like to, to keep it um, uncomplicated. I think that's like something that I aspire to do and with all, anybody that I kind of uh, interact with. I don't really want there, there to be much margin for misinterpretation or error. So I like to I like for people to know what's going on and to not misinterpret what I'm saying. So I think that sometimes that does kind of translate probably to my lyric writing that, you know, this is what's going on and nothing else. <laughs> I find that super interesting because in a song like Somebody to Anybody, you talk about like how being a pair would, how do you suffering would make you split. And it makes you seem like a fairly shy person. But then you listen to the songs, it's the opposite of shy. So oh, you're interesting. Just, you're just saying everything and you're putting it all out there. Well, I think that, I mean, yeah, I think that for me it's... I think that I'm incredibly, incredibly shy, and there's something about that that's probably, uh, I mean, it's hard to talk about yourself sometimes and understand and, or try and put your own personality into words, to be honest, because it always changes and it's always different, just like anybody else, but um, I do have trouble, you know, I think it's it's hard to kind of uh, be on display sometimes, so that's, that's I sometimes struggle with, but, uh, so I think it's probably all of the above is in there. <laughs> I know that you've been writing since you were about 14, 15, but apparently when you first started singing, you were apparently like a yeller? Oh, yeah. I was, I was so <laughs> loud. I, I mean, I, I yelled really loudly when I would try and sing. Um, I didn't really understand just like dynamics or anything like that. So, But there were certain singers. Um, now a really good friend of mine, Aoife O'Donovan, I, I heard her for the first time, and that really taught me a lot about, you know, being subtle and thinking about... Uh, thinking about the volume of your voice <laughs> and also just thinking about like what it does to music or a song to how it serves it to kind of you know have your moments of subtlety or quiet and then save up the the big the, the bigger for the right yeah yeah moments, totally right? yeah which you totally nail now by the way well, thank you You're i appreciate it <laughs> well here on the website we not only interview musicians but also wrestlers so if oh we were gosh. to have a wrestling gimmick what would that be Wait, what do you mean? Like a like, like if a, you were to have a persona a character in the ring, oh, how wow. would you like to come off? Interesting. <laughs> I have no clue. I've never thought of that before. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of like sometimes I know that they relate maybe to like an animal or something. I know that sometimes like a spirit animal of mine has been like an otter. <laughs> an otter. So maybe like a... <laughs> what? I have to stop for a second. Why is your spirit animal I don't know. Somehow, somehow I relate to otters in a big way. I don't know why, uh, but they're kind of like, they just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've just, I have a connection with, with the, okay. the animal. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure why, but uh, maybe it would be like, um, I don't know. You, you figured that one out. I'm not sure <laughs> how you would relate otters to a, like a wrestling name, but. Uh, maybe if that that was to be like my my spirit animal, so maybe it would be like more clever than like big and strong or okay. something. And, and would the otter want to be a good guy, bad guy in the ring? I'm How definitely a good guy. Good I'm guy. totally okay. a good guy. Yeah, right. totally a good totally guy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and if we were to keep this hypothetical character going, if you we were to walk down the ramp, who would you want to play you out? Which band or artist? Oh wow. Um, who maybe like Jack Black? Yes. <laughs> I feel like Jack Black and his band, that would be really some tenacious D going get on. some Tenacious D going. I think that that would definitely be like wrestling, good otter wrestling music. Okay. Yeah. I like this. It's all coming together. Totally. <laughs> well, let's wrap things up. I do want to leave it with the fans. Is there anything you want to say to your awesome fan base who's going to be viewing? Oh, gosh. I mean, thank you so much for listening. And um, there's more music to come. I'm excited to make a new record. And uh, it's awesome to be in Toronto. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, and we'll see you soon. Oh, absolutely. I cannot wait for the new music. You have no idea. Thank you. (laughs) And remember, to everyone viewing, you can visit us at alishatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. See ya.